Happy sunny Tuesday. Just kidding. The time for convening has arrived. The Senate will now come to order. At this time, I would like to ask that all unauthorized persons exit the chamber. It is my distinct honor, and I've been waiting a number of days to be able to say this, to recognize a senator from the 53rd District. Mr. President, I miss you too. The men and women of this state sent it ready to do business for the people of Georgia under your leadership. A little a couple of things to note. According to the uh, member from the 7th District, way down there in Rosilla, today is National Drink Wine Day. Drink Wine Day, yes, sir. And also the senator from the 49th reminded me of eat ice cream dinner today. So it's a joyous occasion. The... Where'd you go? The journal's been read and found to be correct, Mr. President. Thank you, sir, for those great words. Is there objection to dispensing with the reading of the journal? The chair hears none, and the reading of the journal is dispensed with. Is there objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none, and the journal is confirmed. All senators who have bills or resolutions to introduce, please bring them up to the Secretary's desk at this time. Mr. Secretary, first reading of Senate bills and resolutions, please. Senate Bill 368 by Senator Harbin and the 16th and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 5 of Title 49 of Pensacola, Georgia, annotated, relating to children and youth services, so as to prohibit child placing agencies from being required to perform Judiciary. Assist. Senate Bill 369 by Senator Payne of the 54th and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Code Section 485511 of Pensacola, Georgia, annotated, relating to returns of public utilities com to Commissioner of Department of Revenue, itemization, and finance. Fair. Senate Bill 370 by Senator Gooch of the 51st and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Title 46 of the Postal Code Georgia Annotated relating to public utilities and public transportation so as to provide for compliance with certain safety and permit requirements. Transportation. Senate Bill 371 by Senator F Gooch of the 51st and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Article 3 of Chapter 2, Title 32 of the Postal Code Georgia Annotated relating to officers in the Department of Transportation. Transportation. Senate Bill 372 by Senator Tillery of the 19th and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend various titles of the OCGA so as to modernize, clarify, and update provisions relating to public health, to amend Article 1 of Chapter 10 of Title 17 of the Health OCG. and Human Services. Senate Bill 373 by Senator Kennedy of the 18th and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Article 8 of Chapter 3 of Title 4, 14 and Part 6 of Article 4 of Chapter 3 of Title 46 of the Judiciary. Senate Bill 374 by Senator Kennedy of the 18th and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Article 8 of Chapter 11 of Title 9 of the Code of Georgia Annotated, relating to provisional and final remedies and special proceedings, so as to revise and provide Insurance for and labor. Senate Bill 375 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Article 7 of Chapter 12 of Title 16 of the Code of Georgia Annotated, relating to sale or distribution to or possession by minors of cigarettes and tobacco. Regulated industries. <clears throat> Senate Bill 376 by Senator Jordan of the 6th, a bill to be titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 24 of Title 33 of the Chicago of Georgia Annotated, relating to general provisions regarding insurance so as to reduce out-of-pocket cost of consumers or insurance insulin. Insurance and labor. Senate Bill 377 by Senator Jones, the 25th, and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Code Section 82102 of the Fisher Code of Georgia Annotated, relating to inspections so as to reduce the number of required annual elevator inspections. Insurance and labor. Senate Bill 378 by Senator Jackson, the 2nd, and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Part 5 of Article 4 of Chapter 11 of Title 16 of the Chicago Georgia Annotated relating to Brady Law regulations so as to require that Judiciary. Senate Resolution 717 by Senator Thompson of the 14th and others, a resolution recognizing and commending Donald Trump, President of the United States, for the new North American Free Trade Agreement and for other purposes. Rules. Senate Resolution 7022 by Senator Jordan of the 6th, a resolution creating the Senate comprehensive approach to family leave policies within state government study committee and for other purposes. Rules. Second please, order, Mr. President. First reading in reference of House bills and resolutions, please. House Bill 663 by Representative Estration of the 104th and others, a bill to be titled an act to amend Chapter 23 of Title 47 of the Fisher Code Georgia Annotated relating to the Georgia Judicial Retirement System so as to require certain membership in the system for certain persons employed in certain full-time Retirement. Positions. House Resolution 326 by Representatives Houston of the 170th and others, a resolution recognizing Mr. Roger C. Dill and dedicating a building in his honor and for other purposes. State Institutions and Property. 
House Resolution 935 by Representative Tanner of the 9th and others, a resolution creating the Georgia Commission on Freight and Logistics and for other purposes. Transportation. That completes the order, Mr. President. Mr. Secretary, please read reports of standing committees now. Mr. President, the Senate Agricultural and Consumer Affairs Committee has at, under consideration the following legislation and has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 362, do pass, respected submitted by Senator Wilkinson of the 50, 50th District Chair. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Economic Development and Tourism has had under consideration the following legislation and has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 322, do pass by substitute, respectfully submitted by Senator Ginn of the 47th District Chair. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Health and Human Services has under consideration the following legislation and has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 345, do pass by substitute, respectfully submitted by Senator Watson of the 1st District Chair. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Judiciary has under consideration the following legislation is instructing me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 315, do pass. Senate Bill 335, do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted by Senator Stone of the 23rd District Chair. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Natural Resources, the Health and the Environment has under consideration the following legislation is instructing me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 356, do pass. Senate Resolution 690, do pass by substitute, respectfully submitted by Senator Harper of the 7th. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Public Safety has under consideration the following legislation and has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 308, do pass. Senate Bill 320, do pass. Respectfully submitted by Senator Albers of the 56th District Chair. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Regulated Industries and Utilities has under consideration the following legislation and is instructing me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 355, do pass. Respectfully submitted by Senator Kauser of the 46th District Chair. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Rules has under consideration the following legislation and is instructing me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Resolution 288, do pass by substitute. Senate Resolution 470, do pass by substitute. Senate Resolution 520, do pass by substitute. Senate Resolution 636, do pass. Respectively submitted by Senator Mellis of the 53rd District Chair. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on State and Local Government Operations has under consideration the following legislation has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. House Bill 825, do pass. House Bill 851, do pass. Respectively submitted by Senator Anderson, the 24th District Chair. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Urban Affairs has under consideration the following legislation and has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. House Bill 134, do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted by Senator Jackson of the 2nd District Chair. That completes the order, Mr. President. All right, Mr. Secretary, will you read bills and resolutions for the second time? Senate Bill 123 by Senator Ligon of the 3rd and others. Waste management, the coal ash, ash surcharge imposed by Ho so local governments eliminate. Senate Bill 268 by Senator Jackson II and others. Notaries public, persons for whom notaries perform notarial acts, valid veterans health information card provide. Senate Bill 298 by Senator Untriman of the 45th. Crimes and offenses and education, protections for and education to minors regarding smoking and vaping provide. Senate Bill 303 by Senator Watson I and others. Georgia Right to Shop Act, greater transparency of prices for non-emergency health care services provide. Senate Bill 310 by Senator Harper of the 7th and others. Professions, regulations provide certain boxing, wrestling, and martial arts associations and federations provisions. Senate Bill 319 by Senator Ginn of the 47th and others. Rivers and river basins, dam safety, building of inhabitable structures in the inundation zone of Category 2 prohibit. That completes order, Mr. President. All right, it's now time for a morning roll call. Time for morning roll call. Are there any motions to excuse? Chair recognizes the Senator from Macon. I'd like unanimous consent. Seventh, 37th for business. Without objection, the, the Senator from the 37th is excused. The Chair recognizes the Senator from the 12th. Good morning, Mr. Leadon. Thank you so much. I ask unanimous consent to excuse the Senator from the 26th, the 2nd, and the 15th. Thank you. Without, did you say the 15th? Yes, sir. Without objections, the Senators from the 26th, the 2nd, and the 15th are excused. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 55th. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent to excuse the Senator from the 36th. Without objection, the Senator from the 36th is excused. The Chair recognizes the Senator from the 44th. 
Mr. Chairman, I ask for unanimous consent to excuse the Senator from the 43rd. Without objection, the Senator from the 43rd is excused. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 10th. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask uh, unanimous consent to excuse the Senator from the 2nd. Without objection, the Senator from the 2nd is excused the second time. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 6th. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask for unanimous consent to excuse the Senator from the 39th for business outside the chamber. Without objection, the Senator from the 39th excused. The Chair recognizes the, oh, she, she waves. Is there any additional motions to excuse? The Chair sees none. Secretary will now call the roll of the Senator. Signify your presence by voting the A switch. The Secretary will unlock the machine. All right, it's now time for our morning devotional. And I'd like to ask that all senators please take your seats and cease all audible conversations. It's now time for our morning devotional, and I'd like to ask that all senators please take your seats. Doorkeepers, please secure the chamber at this time. I'd like to recognize the senator from the 31st to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance and to introduce our Chaplain of the Day. Would you join me in the pledge to the United States flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the Georgia flag. I pledge allegiance to the Georgia flag principles for which it stands, wisdom, justice, and moderation. It truly is an honor for me to uh, be able to introduce to the Senate my pastor. Um, he has served at, at the church that I'm a member of for 27 years now. He was saved at the age of 15 and was called to preach at the age of 17. He's joined with uh, today with his, um, by his wife, Miss Faye Parker, sitting over here, the beautiful lady. She is, uh, she is always uh, a very um, well-dressed and uh, perfect pastor's wife. Um, she, she serves with me on Sunday morning doing our Sunday school attendance and um, certainly um, serves our church well and has served our pastor well. Um, Brother Parker has been a pastor for over 55 years, preached over 400 um, revivals and Bible conferences. Uh, he has served as the vice president of the Georgia Baptist Convention. Um, he uh, also serves in the community uh, as a character coach for the Bremen High School football team. He has served as the chairman of the Georgia Baptist Executive Committee. And uh, before I bring him up, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize that our seniors from our church has joined us today. Uh, they made the trek uh, to come over here and they're, they're joining us in the gallery as well. So if you would uh, give an attentive ear to Brother Herman Parker. Thank you, Senator Heath, Mr. President and members of the Senate. I cannot tell you how honored I feel to be in your presence. I also feel very humbled for the opportunity of coming to share a word with you today. 
My dilemma is to know what to say to such an august body as this. My preaching professor used to say, if you don't know what to preach, preach to your own needs. Chances are somebody in your audience will have that same need. That's what I want to do today. Jesus and his disciples had had a very busy and tiring day. The multitude had been with him. He had healed their sick. He had met their needs. He had shared the scriptures with them. At the end of the day, he asked his disciples to get in the boat with him and go across the Sea of Galilee to the other side. Once they got in the boat, we read in Mark chapter 4 that Jesus went to sleep. On the way across the Sea of Galilee, a vicious storm arose. And that's what I want to talk about for just a moment. Facing the raging storms of life. There are three things I want to say about that. Number one, the reality of storms. Storms come to all people. We have lived long enough to know that storms are a part of our experience in life. There are no exceptions. If Jesus, the Son of God, and his chosen men face some storms, chances are we're going to encounter some storms in our lives. Storms take different shapes. There are thunderstorms and rainstorms and snowstorms and hailstorms. And there are storms in our lives with different shapes. There are personal storms. There are physical storms. There are political storms. There are financial storms. Storms come to the nation. Storms come to the communities. Storms sometimes come to our churches. Storms come to our homes and storms come to our lives. Storms come in various sizes. Sometimes they are mild storms, sometimes they are devastating storms. And storms come at all times. Sometimes they come on the hill of painful defeat. At other times they come after great victory. Most often the storms of life occur when we least expect it. The disciples of our Lord going across the Sea of Galilee with Jesus never dreamed they would encounter such a storm. Storms are a reality. And although I don't know anything about most of you, I suspect that some of you have just come through a storm. Some of you may be in the midst of a storm right now. Others may be about to enter a storm, but storms are a reality. Let me say a word about the reason for the storms. When the storms come to our lives, invariably we ask the question, why? Why me? Why now? What about my storms in my life? There may be many reasons for the storms. Let me offer three suggestions. Sometimes storms are used to correct us. The classic Bible example, of course, is a prophet Jonah. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach in rebellion and disobedience. He got on a ship to go in the opposite direction. God sent a vicious storm that threatened to take the ship down. And Jonah was thrown overboard and swallowed by his fish and God changed his mind. Sometimes God uses the storms to correct us. But there are other times he uses the storms to test us. Every time a storm comes, it does not mean that God is correcting us for some wrong that we've done. It may be just a test. The disciples of our Lord were right where they were supposed to be, doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing, and yet they encounter a storm. Obviously, the Lord was testing them to see if they believed his word and would they trust his presence. 
Sometimes storms test us. There are third, there's a third reason sometimes storms prepare us for ministry to other people. God allows us to go through a storm that we might help those who come after us who go through the same storm. The Apostle Paul said, I comfort those who are in trouble with the same comfort that I myself have received from God. God may have sent a storm to your life to prepare you for the very assignment of being in the Georgia Senate, but we talk about the reasons for our storms. A closing word, the response to those storms. They are a reality. There are some reasons. What is our response? In the story in Mark chapter 4, there were four, or three pictures we see. Number one, there was panic in the storm. The disciples waked up Jesus, who was asleep, and said, Don't you care that we are perishing? They panicked, obviously. They didn't believe the word of Jesus when he said, We're going over to the other side. They thought they were going under. So they panicked. But there's a second picture in the storm, and that is one of peace. Jesus was asleep in the midst of the storm. How do you sleep when the wind is howling and the waves are beating and the boat is filling up with water? And the only reason one can sleep at a time like that is because of his total trust in the Father and, and knowing that he will take care of him. There was the panic in the storm. There was the peace in the storm. But then there was a power over the storm. Jesus stood up and the wind sat down. Jesus spoke and the waves became silent. He has the power over all our storms. How do we know peace in the midst of our storms? By understanding that he who has power over the storms is in the boat with us and he will never leave us or forsake us. His word is true. His grace is sufficient. When I was a boy, my elder pastor used to sing a song entitled Stand By Me. He said, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. Let's bow together, please, let us pray. Father, I thank you so much for allowing the storms to come to our lives. Thank you that you're in the control, you're in control of the storms and thank you that you use the storms. Thank you for the joy of being with my brothers and sisters in our state today. Thank you for these ladies and gentlemen that you have put to lead us, to rule us, to guide us. We come to pray over them now. We ask that you give them a desire to seek your will Give them a wisdom to know your will and give them courage to do your will. For after all, you have asked us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and in Georgia and in this Senate, your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I'm going to photobomb this picture too. Are there any unanimous consents? All right, we're now going to introduce the doctor of the day, and I'd like to call upon the senator from the fourth to introduce our doctor of the day. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the Senate. I'm truly honored today to present to you uh, not only a fine family physician, a fine uh, pediatric physician in the Statesboro, but a, a great friend, a, a person with a servant's heart who uh, 
really has done great things for children in our area. Uh, Dr. Michelle Zena uh, attended Mercer University uh, School of Medicine, completed her residency at General uh, Pediatrics at the University of Florida. Uh, in 2016, she left a successful career in general pediatrics to follow her passion of behavioral pediatrics, which she uh, practices today. She's the chair of the State DFACS uh, Advisory Board. In 2017, she was honored by the Department of Public Health for her contributions to quality care of children. I can just tell you as, a, as the head of Behavioral Pediatrics Resource Center today, she is helping children with autism and children with uh, mental, mental conditions that need assistance all over Southeast Georgia, really truly providing a wonderful service. She is an outstanding physician and just a great human being, and I'm very honored to present Dr. Michelle Zena. Thank you so much. Uh, while I hope none of you will have an autism or ADHD medical emergency today, if you do, I'm extremely qualified. Um, and I, I thought I would just tell you a little story about a patient of mine who last year was a seven-year-old with autism who would drag his daddy to the kitchen by the hand when he was hungry because that was the only way he could ask for food and needed help with everything. All of his language was just parroting words that he'd already he heard and really had no meaning. And then this body passed legislation that made children on Medicaid able to access ABA therapy. And two weeks ago, I was wrapping up a staff meeting and putting, cleaning up the food from the staff meeting, and he came into the ABA clinic through that room and said, hi, Dr. Zena. I want a cucumber. I want a cucumber, please. And in nine months, he went from not being able to ask for food to being able to tell me that he wanted a cucumber that was left over from the salad, which is absolutely amazing. He's potty trained. And if y'all, as a body, had not seen fit to have Medicaid pay for ABA therapy, he would not end up being a contributing adult in our society. But on this rate, I think he will. So thank you very much. We have a number of special guests joining us today. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask the secretary to read the resolution on our first set of special guests. Senate Resolution 743 by Senator Watson of the First, a resolution recognizing and commending Georgia physicians Patrice Harris, MD, Sarah H. Sally Goza, MD, and Jacqueline Fincher, MD, as presidents of the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the American College of Physicians, respectfully, and for other purposes. Whereas this year, Patrice Harris, MD, a psychiatrist from Atlanta, Georgia, who specializes in treating children and adolescents, is the president of the American Medical Association, the largest physician association in the United States. And whereas this year, Sarah H. Sally Goza, MD, a pediatrician from Fayetteville, Georgia, is the pres president of the American Academy of Pediatrics, a 67,000 member physician association for general pediatrics, pediatricians and medical and surgical pediatric specialists. And whereas in April this year, Jacqueline Fincher, MD, an internist from Thompson, Georgia, will become the president of the American College of Physicians, whose 159,000 members specialize in internal medicine and its related specialties, making it the largest physician specialty organization in the United States. And whereas these outstanding women physicians from our state will lead three of the largest medical associations in the United States, co compromising nearly 471,000 physicians, an accomplishment in which Georgia can take immense pride. Now therefore be resolved by the Senate that the members of this body are proud to salute these Georgian women physicians for their outstanding achievements in these prestigious national medical associations and further recognize and acknowledge the invaluable contributions they make as role models, inspiring future generations of young women to leadership roles in medicine. That concludes that, Mr. President. Is there objection to adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. I'd like to call upon the senator from the first to introduce our special guest today. Thank you, Mr. President. It is certainly my honor today in recognizing three great women here uh, in the state of Georgia. Uh, not only are they practicing uh, physicians, one a pediatrician who is actively practicing, and she shared with me that she has a one o'clock patient, so we need to get on the road with this. 
uh, but we have a physician who is an internal medicine doctor who is actually in my medical school class, so I will not share any other stories relating to that. But we also have Patrice Harris, who is a uh, child practicing uh, psychiatrist, child psychiatrist. She is taking a sabbatical, as you will understand, being president of the American Medical Association. So we have three great ladies, great women here today from Georgia who are presidents of their respective societies. President of the American Medical Association, the President of American Academy of Pediatrics, and the American College of Physicians, which is the internal medicine national organization. They are women, they are respectable, but more importantly, they are leaders and they are quality people. We're certainly very happy to have them here today, and I'd like for them to say just a few words here. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Jacqueline Fincher from the American College of Physicians. My national colleagues asked me, what, what's in the water down here that you've got three women head of these national physician organizations? And I say, honey, we just grow steel magnolias down here in the great state of Georgia. The American College of Physicians is the largest physician specialty organization, and we envision a health care system where everyone has coverage for and access to the health care they need at a cost they and our state and country can afford. Thank you to all you senators out there and um, all those of you who work hard to help us provide affordable health care in all of Georgia to all our Georgia citizens. And don't forget, I'm from Atlanta, but I'm, I've practiced in rural Georgia now. Don't forget us in rural Georgia and all the access and health care needs that we have. Thank you. I, I'm Sally Goza. President of the American Academy of Pediatrics, and thank you guys for this wonderful honor, and I'm so honored to be here with these other two amazing women. The American Academy of Pediatrics stands for the health, we promote the health and well-being of all children, and I just think it's really amazing that we have three women from Georgia as presidents of these organizations, and I hope that you guys will help us to make sure that every child in Georgia has a chance to reach their highest potential. Thank you. Thank you and good morning. I'm Dr. Patrice Harris. I'm the 174th president of the American Medical Association and the first African American woman to hold that privilege. It is my, thank you, thank you. It is my honor along with Dr. Goza and Dr. Finch uh, to take our Georgia roots nationwide to work on behalf of our patients. We want to make sure that every patient has an equitable opportunity for health. The three of us demonstrate that girls rock, Georgia rocks, and thank you very much. Mr. Secretary, will you read the resolution for our next special guest today? Senate Resolution 724 by Senator Tate of the 38th, a resolution recognizing February 18th, 2020 as Clark Atlanta University Day at the State Capitol and for other purposes. Whereas the university's four colleges offer 38 academic programs to roughly 4,000 students annually, making a valuable contribution in the future workforce and leadership of Georgia. And whereas Clark Atlanta University is a founding member of the Georgia Research Alliance and the home of the Center for Cancer Research and Therapeutic Development. Whereas Clark Atlanta University is the home of the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development. And whereas Clark An Atlanta University is the first private historically black university to host a chapter of Phi Kappa Phi, America's most prestigious, prestigious honor society for all academic disciplines. And whereas Clark Atlanta University is now under the leadership of President George T. French Jr., PhD, one of the nation's longest tenured and accomplished presidents. And now therefore be resolved by the Senate that the members of this body recognize February 18th, 2020 as Clark Atlanta University Day at the State Capitol and commend Clark Atlanta University, Dr. George T. French Jr., President of Clark Atlanta University, students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends for the many years of dedicated service to the higher education of Georgia citizens and for attracting young scholars from across the nation to our great state. That could to order, Ms. President. Is there objection to adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted.
I'd like to call upon the Senator from the 38th to introduce our special guest today. Thank you, Mr. Governor. I appreciate that. It is my pleasure to introduce to you um, the president of Clark Atlanta University, which you know I am a proud alumni of. And so we have with him the Student Government Association president, the student um, graduate president, the chief of staff, and the Atlanta chapter president for the Alumni Association. And now I call upon the president, Dr. French, to come and give us a few words. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to thank Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, President Pro Tem Butch Miller, members of the Georgia Leg Legislative Black Caucus, the author of our resolution, and this double graduate of Clark Atlanta University, Senator Horacina Tate. And to this entire illustrious body, we welcome you from Clark Atlanta University. I am George T. French, Jr., and I have the privilege of serving as president of the greatest historically black college or university within the United States of America, Clark Atlanta University. Clark Atlanta University is part of the AU Center, which comprises Spelman College, Morehouse College, Morehouse School of Medicine, and Clark Atlanta University being the only university within the AUC. We have nearly 4,000 students. We are the largest private HBCU within the state of Georgia and the largest United Negro College Fund University in the nation. We are known for our uh, world-class prostate research center and our cyber physical systems. We are Clark Atlanta University and we simply come to say thank you to the legislature for hosting Clark Atlanta University Day, February the 18th, 2020. Thank you so much. God bless America, God bless the great state of Georgia. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, will you read the resolution for our next special guest? Senate Resolution 696 by Senator Heath of the 31st and others. A resolution recognizing and commending Dr. Will Parrish on his outstanding service to the state of Georgia as a primary care physician and for other purposes. Whereas as a dedicated primary care physician serving patients throughout West Georgia for the last 20 years, Dr. Parrish has also donated free medical care to the Rapid Clinic of West Georgia, supporting the working poor and indigent population. And whereas it is abundantly fitting and proper that the outstanding accomplishments of this remarkable and distinguished Georgian be appropriately recognized. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Senate that the members of this body recognize and commend Dr. Will Parrish for his efficient, effective, unselfish, and dedicated public service to the state of Georgia, and extend the most sincere best wishes for continued health, happiness, and success. That completes the order, Mr. President. Is there objection to adoption of, of the resolution? The chair hears none, and the resolution is adopted. I'd like to call upon the Senator from the 31st to introduce our special guest today. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. Uh, so you've uh, met and heard from my spiritual leader today. I also have my family physician here with me. So uh, we're trying to, trying to cover all the bases. <clears throat> Dr. Will Parrish is, um, has uh, been serving patients throughout West Georgia for the last 20 years. Uh, as you heard in the resolution, he's donated uh, his time to the Rafa Clinic uh, of West Georgia, um, supporting the working poor, indigent po uh, population. Um, he has served on the uh, Medical Executive Committee for the Tanner Medical Group Board, and um, he's also served on the Community Foundation of West Georgia and the Pregnancy Resource Center. Uh, Dr. Parrish is a kind and generous man, and honestly, a man of few words. We're going to give him a chance to speak to you, but uh, he's, uh, he's my kind of guy. He, 
He doesn't say a lot, but what he says is very important. Um, he also serves in our community by offering free uh, physical examinations to the student athletes and uh, is also a man of deep and abiding faith. He is a member of a First Baptist Church where I attend and has been a deacon for over 10 years and he sings in the choir. Um, he has also joined this morning on the podium uh, by his wife, Amy, his son, Eli, his father, Sonny Parrish, and his sister, Christian. Dr. Parrish? Thank you, Senator Heath, and this esteemed body. It has been my honor and a privilege to serve the West Georgia community and the Bremen community for 20 years. As each and every one of you know, no one can serve or be successful in service without resources. And I want to thank this body as well as the House of Representatives and the governing bodies of Georgia for supporting med medical education in Georgia. Without that support, it would not be possible. I also would like to thank the support of my family, my community, my church, and I also would like to thank Tanner Health Systems, who has provided opportunities for me to thrive and to help practice state-of-the-art health care in West Georgia. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the resolution to our next special guests? Senate Resolution 669 by Senator Wilkinson of the 50th and others. A resolution commending the Georgia Future Farmers of America and recognizing February 18th, 2020 as FFA Day at the State Capitol and for other purposes. Whereas the Georgia FFA ranks as the third largest state FFA association in the nation with nearly 60,000 current members and 350 local chapters across the state. And whereas the mission of the FFA is to make a positive difference in the lives of students by developing their potential for premier leadership, personal growth, and career success through agricultural education. Now therefore be it resolved by the Senate that the members of this body commend the Georgia Future Farmers of America for its contribution to the welfare of the state and nation and recognize February 18th, 2020 as FFA Day at the State Capitol. That completes the order, Mr. President. Is there objection to adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. Like to call upon our good friend, the Senator from the 50th, to introduce our special guest today. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. Now, isn't this a good looking backdrop up here? Now, there, there, there is one in this line that's not a state FFA officer. I don't know whether you can pick him out or not. But, yeah. I would. Uh, of course, those of you that know me know this is the big day of the year for me, so I just kind of want to uh, soak it all in for a minute. But it is FFA Day at the Capitol. The Future Farmers of America was started almost 100 years ago now, right at the height of the Depression. It was an organization for farm boys to give them an opportunity to maybe get out and go some places. Uh, do some things that they wouldn't have otherwise had the opportunity to do at that time. Most Americans were farmers. Since that time, our country has evolved to the point that now only 1% of our population actually farm the land. But when you think about if we don't protect those 1%, it's really going to have implications for the other 99% of us and change our lifestyle dramatically. Of course, agriculture and agribusiness is the biggest employer in our state. One out of seven jobs is directly related to agriculture and agriculture education FFA has done a great job training leaders, not just in the technical skills related to agriculture, but the leadership opportunities, serving as a local chapter officer, serving as a member of a committee and, and learning those uh, leadership skills that are so important in life. We're very fortunate to have four of our state officers. We have eight state officers in all. We have four of our state officers that I'm going to introduce this morning. They sent the best officers to the Senate chamber and the other four went to the House. <laughs> so raise your hand when I introduce you please. Lizzie Parks from Blakely County, Maddie Ann Davis, Brantley County, 
I think I worked with her mom when her mom was a state officer and her dad's a sheriff down there, Sheriff Lynn, Lynn Davis. So I thought I'd put that plug in. Uh, Kylie Whitworth from Madison County. And now I'm going to ask uh, Spin Oliver from Harris County to make remarks on behalf of the state FFA organization. Thank you, Senator Wilkson. Uh, good morning. Uh, on behalf of the 60,000 FFA members across the state of Georgia, I would like to thank each and every one of you for the impact you have made on this state. Uh, this year's state FFA theme is Limitless. And Limitless is breaking past the boundaries that we have for ourselves and to have an impact on those around us. And thanks to your support right here in the Golden Dome, you have given FFA members across the state the chance to find their limitless potential. So thank you so much for all that you have done for Georgia agriculture and the next generation of leaders. And we look forward to how, seeing how you will continue to support FFA and agriculture education in the future. We wish you a great session and uh, thank you so much for having us today. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the resolution for our next special guests? Senate Resolution 637 by Senator Strickland of the 17th. A resolution commending Trianos L. Thornton, a gifted second grader at Henry County Elementary School and for other purposes. Whereas Trianos L. Thornton has been recognized locally and nationally for his superlative achievement of organizing and leading a regional food and toy drive. And whereas he is the founder and president of TNN Bowties and Apparel and was recently recognized by the Atlanta's Atlanta Business Chronicle as one of the top 25 entrepreneurs under 25. And whereas this incredible eight-year-old plans to be a cardiologist when he grows up. Now therefore be it resolved by the Senate that the members of this body heartily commend Triandos L. Thornton for his inspiring public service in Georgia and express their most sincere best wishes for his continued success. That completes the order, Mr. President. Is there objection to adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. I'd like to call upon our good friend, the Senator from the 17th, to introduce our special guest today. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. It is my honor today to get to recognize Triandos Thornton. We're joined today by his parents, Ms. Shana and Triandos Thornton. Also his grandparents, Ms. Peggy and Sammy Thornton, and his little brother Noah back here as well. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about the story of Triandos. When he was four years old, he was watching TV with his mom. And he saw a commercial with little kids crying. It was a commercial about kids that are hungry. And he asked his mom about that, and he said, Mom, I want to help. I want to do something. I could raise the canned food drive to help them eat. They don't have to, be, they have to cry anymore. When he was four years old, he started a canned food drive that's continued every year since then, up now to the age of eight. And that's for the last four years, every year during the holidays. The last two years, they also added toys to this drive as well. Triandos, under his leadership, starting at the age of four, he's collected over 2,000 items for kids around our country. We've had donations as far away as Texas and New York to his program. And all the money that he raised, all the items that he raised, goes to the United Food Force to help pro provide for needy families. In addition to that, I wore my bow tie today for a reason, not just because I want to look like the majority leader today. Triandos also started a business called TNN Bow Ties and Apparel when he was just five years old, selling bow ties and other apparel as well. I know his dad and granddad wore their bow, bow ties today. Gone to him for not wearing his today, after all. But he has a podcast that he started. At the age of eight, he start, starts a podcast for other kid entrepreneurs that want to learn how to start a business. So he is an inspiration to me, to all the people in this great state, not just for what he does for those that are needy, for also chasing his dreams and starting a business as a kid as well. Y'all, please help me recognize Mr. Triandos Thornton. Talk to the state senate, if you will. <laughs> Thank you for having me here, and always help one another. Thank you very much. Thank you. Man, you got a future ahead of you. Great job. Thank you. Let's go take some pictures. Okay. Thank you.
At this point, does any senator wish to rise for a point of personal privilege? The chair recognizes the senator from the 56th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. I am uh, honored today to recognize uh, a couple of uh, folks who have done some extraordinary work. Uh, first, uh, I have over here uh, to uh, my right, Ananya Ganesh. This extraordinary young lady uh, who lives in my district uh, certainly exemplifies the future of Georgia. Uh, it makes me proud to represent her. We've got her mom here today as well, but let me tell you just a few things that she has done. Uh, she has uh, achieved many uh, great feats through the Westminster Schools and is the founder and CEO of the Girls Maker Initiative and the International Youth Council co-chair. She's developed numerous biomedical products and won prestigious awards for the Global Healthcare Challenge winner, Gene Pool Pitch Competitive National winner, second place grand award winner in the Translational Medical Science and the winner of the National First Place Science Award and Broadcom Masters. The work that she has done to help out her fellow students, her fellow state and society are really extraordinary. And I'd ask you if you would please give her a warm round of applause for her great work. And Mr. President, I have one more group that I would like to recognize today. We have representatives here from the hemophilia uh, group of Georgia, and I think they're somewhere in the gallery. If you are here, would you please stand up? Please give them a round of applause. I'm honored to represent them in the Georgia Senate. Uh, they are based in Sandy Springs. They're a nonprofit organization founded in 1973. Uh, and they are the only organization in our entire state specifically helping out those with hemophilia and other blood-related disorders. They're there to help enhance the quality of life of all of those who are dealing with these problems. Hemophilia Georgia doesn't just work locally, they work on behalf of our state and they advise the Hemophilia Advisory Board uh, serving as uh, the advisor and standard for the treatment for all those individuals. They also reach beyond the borders of Georgia working with the World Federation of Hemophilia. I would ask that you continue to give us great support for this wonderful organization and the great work they do to help those who need a little extra assistance. Thank you so much. Mr. President, I yield the well. Chair recognizes the senator from the 14th. Thank you, Mr. President. Many of you know throughout the state a gentleman named Christian Owen Stevens of Canton, Georgia. You see, Christian was a crazy ranger that would jump out of planes at many of the events throughout the state, throughout the southeast, and even at the White House with a flag, especially when he came at patriotism and patriotic the 4th of July and other events. He ran a charity where he raised money for kids at Christmas for the families where their parents, dad or mom, were deployed. And on Monday, he passed away after a skydiving accident, went awry, leaving behind Angel, his wife, Riley, and Charlie, his young children. Christian leaves behind a huge hole in our country, and for those of us that were close to him, a hole in our heart. Mr. President, I would ask if we could have a moment of silence for not only Christian, who hopefully is with his father in heaven, but for his family that he leaves behind. The senator had asked that we all rise and offer a moment of silence. Thank you. I yield the well. Chair recognizes the senator from the 48th for a point of personal privilege.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to note a somber anniversary that passed over us uh, while we were away last week working on the budget. Last Friday, February the 14th, marked two years since 17 young lives were stolen by gun violence in Parkland, Florida at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Regardless of our differences on opinions on policy prescriptions to combat gun violence, I know that we all in this chamber will never discount the grief of communities like Parkland stricken by such horrific tragedy. I know too that our hearts are with those who lost loved ones two years ago and with all of those who have lost family, friends, and loved ones to gun violence. Gun violence has stolen and scarred countless souls in our country with increasing frequency and fervor, and we must rise to fight for those whose voices have been silenced. What gives me hope is that in remembering their classmates in Parkland, brave students have inspired a generation of young people to speak up and speak out about the need for common sense gun safety reform. Some of those activists are here with us today, and I'd encourage you all to hear what they have to say. After all, the children are our future. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the whale. Chair recognizes the majority leader for a point of personal privilege. Oh, pardon me. It's been, we've had a little bit of a break. Chair recognizes our pro tem for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, you, Mr. President. I've been called you, worse. You, you than both the, look than alike. The majority leader. You look alike. <laughs> Sorry. He saw the head. He, he saw us standing together and thought it was. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to uh, address you this morning because of a very special group of people who are here. Uh, as a child growing up, uh, I'll, I'll tell this briefly my dad was a country doctor made house calls and uh, often went to rec scenes. And that was before the days of the EMS, the EMT and emergency services. And, um, and oftentimes we'd go to a wreck and way out in the country and you'd get there and we'd beat the ambulance there. I mean, the ambulance would arrive and it would, be, it would be a hearse from the funeral home with a red light on top. I always thought that was a conflict of interest, don't y'all? <laughs> this thing ain't gonna make it, just take him on to the house. <laughs> but. The EMS services that we have today in the United States and the state of Georgia truly are the best in the world. I asked a young man one time, he was a new American, I said, what do you like best about the United States? And he thought for a minute, he said, 911. I said, 911? He said, yeah, we don't have 9 we didn't have 911 in my country. I mean, think about 911, you call 911, and you get help and you get it in a hurry. And uh, the reason you get it in a hurry is because of the fine individuals that serve in that field. And I'd like to recognize first uh, Dr. Esther Wang, who's doing a fellowship. Raise your hand, Esther, who's doing a fellowship at, at, uh, at uh, Grady Hospital. Give her a hand. There you go. <laughs> Natalie Zink, who will be studying emergency medical services at uh, Augusta University. Uh, Kim Littleton, who is with EMS Services here in Georgia. Let's do this one time. All right, one, two, three. No, just once, just one clap. One, two, three. There you go. And my longtime family friend and a great member of our community and a servant of his fellow man, my good friend, Chad Black. Thank you very, very much. If you have a moment, thank you, EMS folks, uh, as they're around the Capitol today. Thank you, Mr. President for yielding this time to me. Never a dull moment. <laughs> Chair recognizes the senator from the 34th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the Senate. I rise just to say thank you. It is such an honor to be able to serve in this body but when you have challenges, all politics aside, it really does a heart 
great when you have your colleagues looking out for you, calling you, letting you know they are thinking about you. But enough about me. This morning, I want to take a moment to recognize the Georgia Dental Hygienist Association, which represents 7,000 professionals who, as primitive specialists, actively promote oral health care and prevent of oral disease. Governor Brian Kemp proclaimed last Thursday, February 13th, as Dental Hygienist Appreciation Day. And the dental goodie bags on your desk this morning serves as a reminder that maintaining good oral health is an essential element to maintaining good overall health. Let me say that again. Maintaining good oral health is essential element to maintaining good overall health. Dental hygienists across Georgia give their time and efforts to provide oral health care to individuals of needs such as children, senior citizens, low-income individuals, and individuals with disabilities. Just last Friday, February 14th, Georgia Dental Hygienists led a collaborative oral health event with Georgia State University faculty and student dental hygienists, Gas South, and the Georgia Department of Public Health at Norton Park Elementary School in Smyrna. Just, this is just one example of how the Georgia Dental Hygienist Association is working to increase access to preventive dental care for our state's underserved population. Please join me in thanking the Georgia Dental Hygienist Association and all of the Georgia licensed dental hygienists for their professionalism and expertise in working to improve the oral health care for all of Georgians. Please join me in recognizing them. Thank you for all you do for the underserved and the underprivileged. I yield the will. Chair recognizes the senator from the 15th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. I take to the well today to recognize some great people from Columbus, Georgia. The city manager, Isaiah Hughley, along with some millennials who are being uh, uh, taught about government relations and things like that. We got the governor with us, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker of the house. So let's give them a big round of applause. In addition to that, Mr. President, I would like to recognize uh, Mr. Howard Pendleton and his group of le youth leadership from Columbus, Georgia, in the gallery. If you'll stand, we'll give you a round of applause, okay? Let's stand up and give them a round of applause. And the millennials up there as well. Thank you for visiting your capital and watching your government at work. Thank you, Mr. President. You're the well. Thank you. Chair recognizes the senator from the ninth for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. It's my pleasure this morning to rise and uh, let you know that today is Professional Association of Georgia Educators, the Georgia Association of Education Leaders, and the Georgia Association of Colleges for Teachers of Education Day at the Capitol. So you're going to see some folks from your local school districts here. Please go out and talk to them. They have lots of good things to say. They're here advocating uh, for their profession, for their local school districts. Uh, please take some time to talk to them and uh, speak with them and uh, just Thanks for all you do for education. Mr. President, I yield the will. Chair recognizes the senator from the 35th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, this is the 18th day of February, and February is officially Black History Month in the United States. And we've only had one legislator to come up and talk about black history. But we had living black history with us with Clark Atlanta University today. And 
in the gallery we have many people who are from Clark Atlanta as well as from Morehouse, Spellman, and Morris Brown, all part of IT, and ITC, all part of the Atlanta University system, which is living black history. I went there, my mom graduated from there, my father, my husband, uh, my great-grandfather even went to Morehouse. So they are all part of that history, and the history lives on, and the beat continues. So I want to give uh, an applause to all of those. I hope some of the uh, people from all those universities, let's give a warm welcome to those from all those colleges who are still here in the gallery. Help me join. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much, Mr. President. I yield the will. The chair recognizes the senator from the 28th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, since today is everybody's day, it seems like there's a lot of groups here. There's one group that has not been recognized, and I wanted to, to do that. Today is actually Georgia's Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist Day, and there are 2,060 licensed CRNAs throughout this state, and today we have 60 CNR CRNAs and students here with us, uh, students from Emory and Augusta University. I'd like for y'all to stand uh, to be recognized, those that are still here um, over the up all the way there. So uh, could we give a warm welcome to them, please? And then, uh, and y'all can have a seat. And, if, and then if you're here today and you have not stood up, I'd like you to stand up to be recognized. All right, we're good. We got everybody. Thank you. I yield the well. Appreciate that clarity, Senator. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 43rd for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. I rise this morning to um, bring honor, recognition, and celebrate this day, February 19th, I'm sorry, February the 18th, as Women Veterans Day at the Capitol. This morning we celebrated women who have put their lives on the line, um, who have uh, fought for their country many, many years. They have been members of every branch of the armed, for armed forces. Um, women started serving in the United States Armed Forces as early as 1901 when the creation of the nurse court began. Right now there are approximately 93,000 women veterans that reside in Georgia, a lot of which have served um, the National Guard and Reserves as well. And right now today, as of 2020, there, there are nearly two million women throughout these United States who have served in the armed forces. Some of them are in the gallery with us. We've given them awards this morning at our breakfast. If you would, please rise and welcome them to their state capitol and thank them for their service. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the will. Thank you, Senator. The chair recognizes the senator from the 33rd for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President, my fellow senators, colleagues, friends, and y'all. Uh, I want to recognize the female veterans. I'm a veteran myself, and we appreciate the good work they do, but this is Black History Month, so I wanted to read, take out a little time for a Black History moment. Uh, Frances E.W. Harper, she was a poet and orator. 
She was called one of the most distinguished African-American women of the 18th century poet and orator. Frances Ellen Watkins Harper skillfully employed her literary genius to attack racial and gender inequality. Raised by her free aunt and uncle, after being orphaned, orphaned at the age of three, Harper was afforded the rare opportunity to receive a well-rounded formal education. Extremely bright and gifted, Harper began writing poetry in her youth and at the age of 21 published her first collection of poems, Forest Leaves. Harper moved to Wilbert Forest, Ohio in 1850 where she taught at the Union Seminary. Harper found herself in exile from her home in the state of Maryland after the passage of fugitive slave laws which allowed free blacks such as herself to be enslaved. This event sparked within Harper the ardent and passion for the cause of abolition. Harper made literary history in 1859 when she published two offers, the first short story to be published by an African American woman. On the lecture circuit, Harper gave impassioned speeches on the ills of racism and gender oppression, which won thousands over to their cause. In 1896, Harper co-founded the National Association of Colored Women with Ida B. Wells, Harriet Tubman, and several others. And that's your Black History Moment. Mr. President, I yield the well. All right, we've got some special guests with us today that uh, we're trying to navigate the building. Uh, Mr. Secretary, can you please read the resolution? Senate Resolution 594 by Senator Harbison of the 15th and others. A resolution recognizing February 18th, 2020 as Columbus Day at the state capitol and for other purposes. Whereas Columbus was the first consolidated government in Georgia, and the Columbus region of Georgia is known for its fantastic visitor attraction, attractions, whitewater rafting, expansive defense entities, e economic growth and development, servant leadership, education, excellence, and beautiful national landscapes. And whereas the citizens of the greater Columbus region are justly proud of their community region, their past, their exciting future, and their many contributions to the state, and thus it is only proper to recognize February 18th, 2020 as Columbus Day at the Capitol. Now therefore be resolved by the Senate that the members of this body recognize February 18th, 2020 as Columbus Day at the State Capitol. That completes the order, Mr. President. Is there objection to adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. I'd like to call upon the Senator from the 15th to introduce our special guest today. Thank you, Mr. President. I have with me today, uh, in honor of uh, Columbus Day, we're gonna have a good time today. You have those great gifts on your desk, but we're glad to have with us today our mayor from Columbus, Georgia, Skip Henderson, along with a, a, a thing that's sort of backwards to me, but it makes sense when it's uh, in the form of General Brigadier General Kevin Admiral. Isn't that amazing? U.S. Army Center of Excellence, and he is an excellent person, along with Pace Halster, Matt Swift, President Chris Markwood of Columbus State University, and of course, accompanied by my colleague from the 29th, uh, Randy Robinson. It's always glad, glad to have them here today, and we're gonna bring our mayor up here to tell you about the great things about Columbus, Georgia. Thank you, thank you, good morning. And, and I tell you, instead of telling you, the resolution was awesome, so what she said. Um, but I will, I will do something that's very important to me and, and on behalf of all Georgians, that is to thank y'all. First, let me thank our senators for the amazing job they do in looking after the folks in our neck of the woods and the state of Georgia. And we thank y'all for doing the same thing. We understand that Georgia would not be such a magnet for business, would not be such a great quality of life state if it weren't for the men and women doing the work of those Georgians in this room. So on behalf of the nearly 200,000 uh, citizens of Muskogee County, thank you so much for your dedication to your state. And we'd like, as a small token of appreciation, in addition to the speaker and the duck that you got in there, and uh, we want to invite you to a reception. It'll be this afternoon at four o'clock in the blue room over at the depot. Just a small way for us to say one more time, thank you. Good morning, Mr. President and Senators. Thanks so much for this great honor uh, recognizing Columbus and Fort Benning. And on behalf of the 70,000 soldiers and family members who live and work at Fort Benning and also the veterans, we really appreciate the support that you provide every day. And not just for Fort Benning, but the military members and the ver veterans of Georgia. Thanks so much.
I just want to point out that representing the leaders that stand behind me are extremely important because we can't begin to discuss the history of our great state without discussing the history of Columbus, Georgia. The effort that they put out each and every day to lift up the 200,000 individuals that live there is an impressive example to all of us, and I want to thank them for the service they do within Muskogee County. All right, you've got a consent calendar of privileged resolutions before you. Does any senator wish to remove a resolution from the consent calendar? Chair sees none. Is there objection to adoption of the resolutions on the consent calendar? The chair hears none, and the resolutions on the consent calendar are adopted. Are there any motions to withdraw or commit? Chair sees none. You have a consent calendar of local bills before you. Mr. Secretary, are there any objections filed to any bill on the local consent calendar? Mr. President, there are no objections filed. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee on state and local government, which is favorable to the passage of the bills on the local consent calendar? The chair hears none, and the report of the committee is agreed to. The question is now on the passage of the bills on the local consent calendar. All those in favor will vote yay, oppose nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 49, the nays are zero. The bills on the local consent calendar, having received the requisite constitution, constitutional majority, are therefore passed. All right, we are now moving on to the rules calendar. We are now moving on to the rules calendar. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Bill 295? Senate Bill 295 by Senator Wilkinson of the 50th. A bill to be titled an act to amend titles 15 and 48 of the Fisher Code of Georgia annotated relating to courts and revenue and taxation respectfully so as to revise the cost of living and general performance based increases to take into account the increases provided for in 2020 to provide for an effective date to repeal conflicting laws and for other purposes. Mr. President, on January 28, 2020, the Senate Committee on State and Local Governmental Operations recommended that this bill do pass, respectfully submitted by Senator Anderson, Chair. That please order, Mr. President. I would ask that I have each and every senator's undivided attention as we're now on to the rules calendar. Chair recognizes the senator from the 50th to speak to Senate Bill 295. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. It is my privilege to bring Senate Bill 295 to you. If you recall, last year we passed legislation that adjusted the entry level salaries for our constitutional officers in our counties. 
after the bill was passed and signed by the governor and after some of the counties looked at the bill, it, uh, there was a question about whether some people would get two pay increases this year. The ACCG and COAG both felt like there needed to be some clarification. They worked together on this and basically this bill just ensures that uh, the county officials will get one pay raise this year and not two. There's been no pushback on this. We had uh, no pushback at all. It passed the committee unanimously, and with that said, uh, if there are no questions, I'd yield well, and I'd ask for your support of this bill. You have, a que you have several questions. Okay. The chair recognizes the senator from the 53rd for a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, senator, thank you for bringing this back with us. Senator Yield. Uh, I will. What, what? With great reservations, I will yield. Yeah, you need you need to also <laughs> on this one. What? Uh, who does this affect actually? This the, affects. Uh, is, is this like a test? The clerk of courts, the tax commissioners, the probate court judges, and the sheriffs. All right. Thank you. Uh, follow up question, Senator Young. I does will. Does this include the animal control officers too? <laughs> no. Thank you. Chair recognizes the senator from the 48th for a question. Does the chairman yield? Yes, ma'am. So I just want to make sure I understand. Since this bill is eliminating or making sure there's not two pay raises, then there's a net positive on the budget for us. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Chair recognizes the senator from the 38th for a question. Senator Yale. I will. I just, since you said it, it, you were clarifying that this was only going to be a raise, one, a, a one-time raise, are we anticipating doing a bill for the next term if we're lucky? The way, to the way, here? this is my understanding. Now, I'm not an attorney, and I thought before I came up here, I'm not going to be able to explain it to you like an attorney. But, you know, one thing that I picked up in eight years, uh, attorneys don't ever see it the same way either. So I just, have to, I just have to tell you how I see it today. They told us because the way the bill was written last year and enacted last year, the only year it impacted was this year. So once we pass this, we should be cl clear on the rest of the years. Okay, so we won't be coming back next year with a pay raise? No, and if for any reason another attorney finds a reason that we should, it'll be somebody else coming back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have no more questions. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair sees none. Is there objection or agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, and the report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 50, the nays are 1. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed.
Chair recognizes the majority leader. Mr. President, I move that the Senate stand adjourned until 10 o'clock on Wednesday, February 19, 2020. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the announcements? Rules will not meet. Ethics will meet in 307 CLOB at 1 p.m. State and local government operations will meet in 310 CLOB at 2 p.m. Regulated industries will meet in 450 CAP at 2 p.m. Banking financial institutions will not meet. Natural and resources and environment will not meet. Agriculture and consumer affairs will not meet. And transportation will not meet. That completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the senator from the 31st for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, I just wanted to uh, bring to your uh, attention our Legislative Prayer Fellowship tomorrow morning, 7.15, in the Governor's Conference Room. We'd love to have you join us. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 40th for an announcement. Thank you. The Women's Legislative Caucus will meet now at, or at noon in CLB room 514. Thanks. I would like to remind each senator, if you have a page here and haven't taken a picture, to come next to the rostrum over here and we'll get your page pictures taken care of. The majority leader has moved that the Senate stand adjourn until 10 o'clock on Wednesday, February 19th, 2020. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. no. And once again, the eyes clearly have it, and the Senate stands adjourned.